This is Pamela Smythe from the University of Waterloo. I'm one of the hosts of Beyond the Bulletin, the podcast of internal communications at the university. We bring you news and views from the U Waterloo community. Please spread the word that we're on soundcloud.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And now the interview from episode 155 of Beyond the Bulletin, originally broadcast on June 2nd, 2023. Waterloo's women's basketball team had their best season ever in 2022-2023. They had a 17-5 record and had their first OUA semi-final appearance since 1986. Their history-making performance won them the title of Waterloo Warriors Team of the Year. Jess Roke, the woman who led them as their head coach, is Imprint Coach of the Year and our interview guest. Welcome, Jess. Thanks, Pamela. Thanks for having me. When did your love of basketball begin? Well, I started playing basketball when I was eight in the Filipino league. Um, I'm half Filipino, so naturally um, my family heritage drew me into sport. Probably around high school is when I really started falling in love with it and like trying to sneak into gyms early mornings before school started. I didn't even know I was good at it. I just know that I loved being around it. My start in the Filipino community um, played a pivotal role in that because it made it fun. It made it something, you know, that my family did on weekends together. Yeah. My passions just grew from there. I wanted to do it all the time. I was doing it in the house (laughs) probably when I shouldn't have been. And, um, yeah, it just took off from there. Yeah. Sorry about that lamp, mom. I'm building a career here. Yep. There were definitely many broken things in the house as a result. (laughs) (laughs) So you attended Cleveland State University on a basketball scholarship. You were co-captain of the CSU Vikings for four seasons, winning two Horizon League championships as a co-captain. How did you get into coaching at the university level from that? Well, after I graduated, my intent was always to pursue postgraduate studies. I wanted to get into physio, so I applied to a couple of physio programs, both back home and at my alma mater. And I didn't get in anywhere, even despite graduating with honors. So uh, my coach offered me a graduate assistantship. So I would be still remain on scholarship, would able to, was able to complete my master's um, so that I could reapply to those programs in a different capacity. So it initially started out as like pursuing more education and ironically just turned into pursuing more basketball. <laughs> But I think it worked out. I'd say you are head coach now of the women's basketball team at Waterloo. And the 2022-2023 season was the team's best performance in its history. You led the team to its first OUA semifinal appearance since 1986. What went right during this season from your perspective? I think it's a culmination of a lot of things. It's, it's hard to like take a season in isolation and just snapshot it and be like, this was the year that we did it all because really I think it started well before then and even well before my time I came on in 2020 and inherited a team of really just great young women we took that group and you know during COVID had what felt like an infinite amount of time to work on ourselves to reinvent uh, what the warrior women's basketball identity could be or what we wanted it to be and then you couple that with you know the staff I had in place the seniors that we had the leadership or the leaders that they had grown to become um, it really just set up for like a special special stage a special environment for us to thrive so it was a lot of things (laughs) well the buck stops here you are the head coach yes you had all of those amazing ingredients yes but you are the leader Thanks. (laughs) So can we unpack what you were saying about reinventing during COVID? What did that look like? I'm always learning more about our history and I want to continue to celebrate our UW history, what that looked like. Um, But at the same time, within the women's basketball program, it hasn't as of recent. I mean, you talked about 1986 was the last time we've been to playoffs. That was before I was born. It's It's been a long time since the program has had any modicum of success. Um, 
And so when you go down that pathway for a really long time, you, you have a culture that doesn't probably doesn't feel the greatest. And, you know, in speaking with alumni, the alumni that continue to like stay engaged, they, they share stories from the time, but it's, it's just a different mindset. And so sometimes that's really hard to shake. Um, especially for the girls that were like, you know, seasons with three wins, no wins, they can really take a toll and, and wear on, on the psyche. And so COVID just gave us a chance to reset, refocus, and, and maybe just like repurpose how we want to show up. And so we, we had Zoom calls, um, weekly, in-person, like team builders, so that we, we could actually start to like live what those things look like and sound like and ultimately feel like. And I would say like, that's something we'll continue to do no matter what, because um, we want to keep building on the, our successes from last season. Do you have like team dinners, team events, things that aren't basketball related? Like what? Every year to kick off the year on Labor Day, we, I invite the team over to my house for a barbecue. Um, but we call it the Warriors Backyard Games because it's not just a barbecue. We have to compete at something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would assume everybody is really competitive. Oh, yeah. It gets, it gets really intense. Sometimes we like story it on our Instagram. So if you want to check out previous years. Uh, we have a bunch of travel planned for this year, so I'm really excited for the the off court cohesion. That's great. Well, how much do you draw on your experience as a university athlete in your work as a coach? Honestly, all the time. I self identify as a player's coach. I like to relate to my athletes. A majority of our staff were once upon a time collegiate women's basketball athletes. So I think in a lot of ways we all draw from our experiences. Is there a theme? Is there a motto that you draw on or keep in mind or tell your players? I would say like the one mantra that like I live through is just like being authentic, being yourself and, and celebrating that. It doesn't mean you stay the same. Like there's always opportunities and room to expand on that. But that's a beautiful thing about about sports and about sports teams is that, you know, you can be from a different walk of life. You can and likely will be around people that you wouldn't otherwise be around in your day-to-day life and then have to collaborate and, and work towards a common goal. And I, I so much love and appreciate basketball for doing that. Um, But we don't get, get those experiences if we're trying to conform to, who we think we should be as opposed to who we actually are. Also, I think because you were a student athlete at such a high level too, you come at it from a place of empathy as well. You know what it's like to be doing exams and having to practice. For sure. It's never, never, never lost on me the demands that are placed on our student athletes, um, especially here at, at Waterloo. Now coaching, having that compassion or even just having that understanding, it allows me to kind of see things from their lens. doesn't mean I give them a break, but um, <laughs> it, it allows me to plan better or to maybe preemptively help mitigate any, any like undue stress, if that makes sense. <laughs> and you, you've got many players who are really strong in academics. Yeah, we had, I think, nine academic All-Canadians last year. So our girls are pretty, like, high achieving. They don't, they don't really need a push from, in that space from my end. Um, so I'm super grateful for that. But I also think that's a testament to them and their work ethic and the supports we have here in our, in our department. Yeah, it's remarkable. And considering how well the team did in the season, this historic season. Yeah. I'm of the belief that one way you do, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're excellent in academics because you show up on time, you're hardworking and you just get things done, um, then you can do the same on the basketball court and you can do the same in how you show up in life as a daughter or a partner or a friend. 
Well, the Canadian Women in Sport organization reported in 2022 that women currently hold only 3% of head coaching roles for men's teams, 18% of head coaching roles in mixed sport, and 26% of head coaching roles for women's teams. I should say these are numbers specifically for university sport, not sort of not broadly. What do you think when you hear those stats? Well, being on the OUA Women in Sports Committee, I actually think those numbers are higher than they used to be, which is shocking to think of. I still think they're quite low, and I know there's still some ground to make up and cover, but I think it just reflects where we are societally, you know, in in our sports world, is that there are still not enough female coaches either being garnered or recruited um, and there's still not enough being done to like help shift that inequity. I, the first time I was coached by a female head coach was when I was in college. And I'm sure for some of my athletes now, I'm, I am their first female head coach, but that doesn't change until we have capable females applying for these positions. And then that doesn't change until we actually hire these capable females. So it's come a long way, but it still has a long way to go. Does it matter? Absolutely. Absolutely. For me, I did, I never considered coaching, even, even as an athlete. But I just think the relatability of, like you had said earlier, just playing, being in their shoes once upon a time, there's just that added level of compassion and understanding and it's like having a mentor right like having someone to model what you could potentially become or just having a a good support system and and someone that's lived their experience I think I'm finding now most athletes when they when they leave the sport it's never just a clean cut no one just graduates and they're like, okay, cool, I'm done, like hung it up, never, never going to touch a basketball again. It's this like slow, awkward transition. It's like, it's a weird breakup actually is what it is. Some people never break up. Like I, I always say I never broke up with basketball. Like we wanted a little pause there when I was in grad school, but we got back together. Our, our relationship remained intact and it's just changed. We almost ha- have an obligation, I would say, like, for myself as a head coach um, and anyone in sport, I think we have an obligation to the young women we are trying to mentor through the sport to empower them to consider different avenues. Most female coaches are former players. Most female officials are former players, which is not necessarily true on the men's side. I believe that having those discussions at the grassroots level, so in high school or even when they're in university, can help bump those numbers a little more. Now, as a head coach, my my goal is to, like, create more of those opportunities for young people to, like, step into different roles. You're a member of the Alliance, which is a group based on athletics and recreation whose mission is to establish positive systemic changes for the University of Waterloo's Black, Indigenous, and racialized community through recognition of education towards and action against racism. And we talked about it a bit with uh, Darrell Adams, football coach, when he was a guest on the podcast. He's one of the founders. Why did you want to join the Alliance? I I grew up in Mississauga. I loved my childhood. I loved being in diverse spaces. I'm a product of a biracial marriage. And so, you know, when you get to understand other people's cultures and backgrounds, I think it just opens you up to so many different possibilities. Um, As I mentioned earlier, sports naturally provides that for you. You're going to be around people that you don't know, people that come from different walks of life. That opens you up to new experiences. I want to be an advocate for inclusion. I want to be an ally for marginalized groups. And I want to just be a part of, you know, educating other people on on my journey through that as well. So the Alliance is very action-based as well, which is, they're not, it's not just, you know, discussions and education, which we do do those things as well. I think in order to change things systemically, we have to we have to collaborate. We have to come together. Um, 
and we have to start at a policy level and these are some of the issues we're tackling within the alliance what kind of support does the does the team have we have a a great partnership with um, united college a lot of our student athletes in first or second year tend to live in united college Um, they'll bring out like students from residence to games they do a lot they do a lot for our program they they invite us to you know different outings that they have you know as a first or second year student you don't know anyone on campus and it really helps to create that like homey vibe or neighbory vibe or it's just like people know you so they'll, like put a picture of our roster and then our home schedule in the cafeteria so it's it's nice to to have, I'll say, like immediate um, supporters within within our university, but even at large, like our parents are a big part of our supports. Um, we have parents that will come all the way to Thunder Bay. Our playoff game last year in Kingston, we probably had like our own Waterloo section. So I'm so grateful for for their support. Obviously our staff, our staff is a huge, huge support. I cannot say enough about my staff. I think, I think the world of them, I always say biasly that I have the best staff in all of you sports because just of how committed we all are, how passionate we are about, about coaching. And I'm super grateful for our alumni too. That was something that I was very pleased to see even in our first year that we could actually play. It was like the year after COVID when we were just getting back. There were bums in the seat, even when we had to like restrict, I guess, like seating. Um, And our alumni are are a big part of that. Well, we have like youth girls basketball teams coming out and, you know, the environment is boisterous and loud I think it creates a, a game, a game environment, a game feel that you want to continue coming back to. It's just like going to a Raptors game, right? Like if there's no one in the seats, you're like, mm, this game's kind of womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then coupled coupled with I like we had a couple. I think our home opener last year was like something like seven hundred, nine hundred people in attendance um that game went into overtime and man it felt like a playoff game it's unreal and I want I want our athletes to experience that because that's what nationals is like but I want our community to experience that as well like I see we we renamed our court after Carl Totsky and he was a longtime athletic director and there's a video that we showed during the naming of his court from the 1972-73 national championship game that we hosted in our gym. And it's in black and white, but there's literally people to the ceiling in pack. But I'm like, I want that environment. Like, who wouldn't want to be a fan and cheering and, like, watching that game? So the community is, is, I think, integral to our success just in, you know, how we financially support ourselves, but also just for the spirit of of the game and the spirit of the university. I think it's so important. Well, people love a winning team. So <laughs> that too, that too. But I think it started before we were winning. So yeah, you never know. Well, at the Athletic Awards Banquet in March, you were named Imprint Coach of the Year, and the team won the Waterloo Warriors Team of the Year Award. Congratulations. Congratulations, team. What does that feel like? It feels like a, an honor. Um, I unfortunately was not able to make the banquet. I was a bridesmaid in a, in a wedding, so I got to tune in virtually to, to see our team win that award and, and our coaching, I would say our coaching staff. I know it's like coach of the year, but it really does feel like my staff's award. Um, I know I'm the head coach, so I get, I get all the good and the bad. But again, like I said, I cannot say enough about my staff. They, they've been great supports for myself in terms of echoing my vision, my message. They, they just make me look really good. I was super humbled and honored and pleased that our team could win and that our team had a great time that night celebrating our tremendous year. 
What's the new team going to look like and what goals do you have? We are going to look very new. Um, I can say that much, but um, I think it's a great opportunity for those that are returning to step in to bigger roles, new roles. We know where we're coming from and where we're coming from was a great landing space last year. Um, So the goal is just to continue to build on that. We have six new people coming in. We graduated seven. um, And of, of the seven that graduated, all of them played significant minutes. So that's why we're going to look so new. But I'm so excited for our team. We'll be relatively young. But I know just how the off season's going now. We're putting in the work. We're putting in the time. And so um, I'm really excited to see where we land in at the end of August in our training camp. And, yeah, the goal is always still to win it all. Any closing thoughts before we finish? I just wanted to thank you, Pamela, for for covering our team and I think just covering women's sports in general. It's, I think it's great. I think we need more of it. Um, I would love to biasly hear more stories um, because that's ultimately how we grow our game. That's how we expand, how we get more female coaches, officials, and people wanting to stay involved in the women's game. So thank you for, for the interview. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed it. So the first game of the regular season is November 3rd in Toronto against York. And you play at home against Guelph on November 11th. So let's get the pack filled to the rafters. Yeah, pack the pack. Come on out. (laughs) Thank you for listening to this interview from the Beyond the Bulletin podcast from the University of Waterloo. You'll find our archive of full episodes on the University of Waterloo website. Select interviews or on the university's YouTube channel. Just look for our playlist there. Please join Brandon Swede and me for new episodes. And don't forget to tell your Waterloo connections about us.